is there any evidence for an infinite God? That's one of the questions I've been asked. How do you know there's a God? Where did God come from? And to answer this question, we're going to start by looking at that molecule of heredity that I'm sure we're all familiar with called DNA. You know, the helical structure of DNA was first discovered by two scientists called Crick and Watson uh, back in 1953. Well, you know what, young people, we know today that scientists have studied a lot more about DNA and we've found that DNA is not just chemistry. Let me explain that to you. Here is a rope that has beads on it, beads representing dots and dashes. By the way, those dots and dashes actually spell out a word. It's the word help. How do I know that? Well, you only know that if you know the Morse code. If you know the Morse code, if you know the language, then you know that those dots and dashes actually spell out a word. But those dots and dashes don't mean anything to you unless you have the language. DNA has these beads, molecules, lined up in a particular order to ha write all this information that builds a human or builds a dog or builds a cat or builds an elephant or whatever. For instance, you're made of trillions of cells and in nearly every one of your cells, you have all the information that builds you. It's been estimated if you were to type out all the information from one set of your genes, from one of your cells, it would fill, they used to say a thousand books, 500 pages each, close type written. Now they say it's much more than that. And here's the interesting thing. That information is not in the molecules. The molecules are arranged in a particular order to write the information. Just like when I open up my Bible and I can read it, but the information I'm reading is not in the molecules. The ink has been arranged into letters and into words and into sentences. And because I understand the language it's written in, that's where the information uh, really is. But here's the interesting thing. You've got to have a language to read the information. And DNA itself has the information that makes the language to read the information, that makes the language to read the information, that makes the language to read the information. You get the idea? In other words, you've got to have the information, but you've got to have the language. If you don't have the language, then you can't read the information. It's all got to be there or it won't work. It's all got to be there at the same time. And you know one of the things that we found out? Languages only ever come from an intelligence and information only ever comes from information. DNA cries out that there's an intelligence behind life. It couldn't have happened by chance random processes. Matter on its own could never produce DNA. But if life evolved, matter had to produce DNA. But that could never happen. I want you to watch one of these short videos we have from the Creation Museum that helps explain this a bit more. If you found an ancient clay tablet with strange characters washed up on the shore, you couldn't read it, unless someone had cracked the code. But you'd still know the letters represented a language, even if you didn't know anything else about the author or his civilization. Language is recognizable, even if you can't read it. Take Morse code. It has three basic parts, dots, dashes, and spaces. These three simple parts are combined to represent letters. There are 26 letters in the English language, which are combined to form over 400,000 words. Those words can, of course, be combined into an infinite number of sequences or sentences. There is evidence that DNA represents a language. Four basic units, called nucleotides, combine into a code for 20 amino acids. From those few amino acids, the body forms more than 100,000 proteins. Even if you can't read DNA, it still has all the hallmarks of language, a language that biologists are just now beginning to crack. Every tiny cell in our body is packed with three feet of DNA, three billion nucleotides. The similarity between DNA and human language is uncanny. In addition to codes, both use similar techniques to pack, access, rearrange, copy, and translate information. DNA seems to represent a language, the language of life. An unseen author, the creator of heaven and earth, has left a testimony of his existence in the DNA of every living thing. For those who believe in evolution, 
They believe that millions of years ago, somehow life had to arise from matter. As, as you think about that, it's not just a matter of saying life arose from matter. Life is built on DNA. You've got to have DNA to arise from matter. But not just DNA, you've got to have a language system. And matter produces a language system. Matter has to produce information. People who believe in evolution don't believe in God. And people say matter gave rise to life. You've got to understand matter had to give rise to zillions and zillions and zillions and zillions of bits of information. And over millions of years, information keeps coming from matter, new information to form all the different kinds of animals and plants, zillions of bits of information. You know what's interesting? We've never seen matter produce one bit of brand new information that never previously existed, not even one bit. An information scientist, Dr. Werner Gitt, wrote a book called In the Beginning Was Information. He's from Germany. And he makes these statements in that book. There is no known natural law through which matter can give rise to information. And he says this, a code system, in other words, a language, is always the result of a mental process. It requires an intel intelligent origin or inventor. DNA is a language system and an information system. It could not have come about from matter on its own. It's absolutely impossible. Now you might say to me, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, what, are, what do the atheists say about that? What about those people uh, who are scientists who don't believe in God? Don't they have an answer? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that question. I want to show you a video clip of an interview with Dr. Richard Dawkins. Who's heard of Dr. Dawkins? Dr. Richard Dawkins. Oh yeah, I think many of us heard of him. He wrote the book, The God Delusion. He's an atheist. He spends most of his life fighting against someone he doesn't even believe exists. A number of years ago, uh, we had someone who interviewed Dr. Dawkins to ask him this question. Dr. Dawkins, you know, he's an atheist. Can you give an example, we only wanted one, where matter produces information and adds it into the genes. By the way, if evolution is true, it had to happen zillions of times. We just want one example, just one. I want you to see how he answered the question. Watch this. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? There he is giving the right answer right now. Can you hear it? That is the right answer. There's no example. Now you might say, okay, okay, that was years ago. What does Dr. Dawkins say now? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that question too. How many of you have seen the movie called Expelled? Oh yeah, a lot of us have seen Expelled. I want to show you a video clip from that because here's Dr. Dawkins, uh, who many years after that video clip was asked the question, how did life arise on earth? What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization e evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an and intriguing possibility. Mm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of yeah. some sort of Do you know what he's talking about when he's talking about look at biochemistry and find a signature? He's talking about DNA. What, you know what he's really acknowledging? DNA cries out there's an intelligence behind the universe. He doesn't believe in God, so it had to be some intelligence from outer space that brought life to Earth. Let's go on. Biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but okay. that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. Well, there you have it. There's one of the leading atheists in the world giving you the evidence to support his faith that life evolved, it came to earth from outer space.
And think about that for a moment, by the way. Dr. Dawkins, how did life on Earth get here? Well, maybe some uh, civilization out there in outer space that it itself evolved had to bring life to Earth. So if you go back to that planet, wherever it is, and you said to him, well, how did life on this planet first come about? Well, I guess his answer would be, well, there was another planet out there somewhere where life evolved and they brought life to that planet, they brought it to this planet. Well, okay, let's go back to that planet now. Now, how did life come about on that planet? Well, there must have been another planet somewhere out there and life evolved and he mocks at us for believing in an infinite creator God. Do you know what? It's the atheist that has a blind faith because the evidence does not confirm their faith. What we see in biochemistry confirms in the beginning God. Isn't it exciting being a Christian? It really is. Dr. Dawkins has a blind faith. As Christians, we don't have a blind faith. Students, don't get the idea that Christians have a blind faith. That's not a blind faith, because if the Bible really is a revelation from God, and he's given us the true history here and where things came from and what life is all about, it'll make sense of the world, and it does. And science, true observational science, will confirm the Bible's history, and it does, over and over again. But then how do we answer questions like this? I remember I was at one conference, a little boy, I think he was about seven years old, who came up to me and he said, Mr. Ham, yes, well, who made God? Oh, don't you just love those questions? And from a little boy like that, so how am I gonna answer that? So I looked at him and said, well, son, if somebody made God, that'd have to be a bigger God who made God. Would that be right? Well, yes, sir. Well, if you've got a bigger God who made God, then who made the bigger God? You have to have a bigger, bigger God who made the bigger God who made God, right? Oh, yes, sir. Well, who made the bigger, bigger God? You'd have to have a bigger, bigger, bigger God who made the bigger, bigger God who made the bigger God who made God, right? Oh, well, yes, sir. <laughs> Do you know the only thing that makes sense, son? What's that, sir? You've got to have the biggest God of all, an infinite creator God. It's the only thing that makes logical sense. Young people, you learn at school about the laws of nature. Why are there laws that are the same today and tomorrow? If it's a random universe, it came about by random processes, why do we have the laws of nature? How can you trust them? Why do we have the laws of logic? If it's a random universe, why have the laws of logic? How do you know that your logic is the right logic, that it evolved the right way? How do, you, how, how do you know that you're really understanding somebody else the way you need to? See, the only thing that makes logical sense is a biblical God. In fact, Non-Christians and atheists like Richard Dawkins have to borrow from biblical principles to do their scientific research because he believes in the laws of nature and he believes in the laws of logic, which only makes sense in the context of a biblical God. Isn't it exciting being a Christian? Think about it. The Bible is true. God's word is true.